Leaked documents seem to suggest that they were doing experiments at that Wuhan lab of the very nature that they said they absolutely were not doing because, you know, if they were doing those kind of experiments, well, it could lead to the outbreak of a pandemic. Let's have a look at these leaked documents. Let's think about why this information continues to be repressed and is continually revealed and what else it indicates, the sense of frustration it creates, the idea that we're being lied to on a huge scale and how difficult it is to have trust ease, conviviality and a collegiate atmosphere with people with different opinions when there's so much lying and this issue gets continually politicised. <coughs> Just in case you're interested, we got this information from The Intercept, which would conventionally be regarded as a kind of left-wing news source. And most of you that watch wherever you are on the political spectrum just want to see people talking openly, are willing to look at new information in a new way rather than blindly pledge allegiance to a set of principles, even if those principles seem now to be incredibly biased and authoritarian and puritanical. Let's have a look at this story. Less than two years before the COVID-19 pandemic began, scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology planned to genetically alter viruses to make them more infectious for humans and release them into bat caves. We've got a brilliant idea. Yes. Let's make diseases more contagious and then release them into bat caves. Are you literally the joker? The research proposal was part of a trove of documents released this week by a group of scientists and activists who are trying to determine the origins of the pandemic. It requires scientists and activists now. That shows you that there is, is an entrenched and defiant mainstream narrative that is sort of has interests around it, guarding it and preserving it. Wouldn't it be good to believe that it were possible to communicate just openly? Oh yeah, no, God, it has come out of that lab. All right, you know, rather than, nah, no, you, know, you have to be an activist. You don't have to be an activist to get the truth out, but it helps. The Wuhan scientists were listed as partners on a funding proposal the EcoHealth Alliance made to the US government's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's not very catchy, is it? DARPA, they are known as. DARPA rejected the proposal and it's not clear what happened to the research project, which the documents described as having a good running start. Well, one way to know, like, if they had carried on with that research would be if, for example, there'd been, like, a massive pandemic Growing suspicion of China's official version has been driven in large measure by the decentralised radical autonomous search team investigating COVID-19 or DRASTIC. They're really pushing to make that acronym work. We call ourselves the decentralised radical autonomous search team investigating COVID. <laughs> it's a good acronym though, let's not criticise them too much. Also, I like the fact that they're decentralised and radical, they sound pretty cool. Throughout the pandemic, about two dozen drastic researchers and correspondents, many anonymous, working independently from different countries, have uncovered obscure documents, pieced together the information, explained it all in long threads on Twitter. Gradually, the quality of their research has gained the acclaim of professional scientists and journalists. Amazing now, this is the age where online activism and even sleuthing is reaching the sort of declared standards of professionals possibly because many professionals have interests in not revealing genuinely radical or contradictory or confronting information. And I think this is a wonderful re-emergence of like kind of amateur spirit of, hold on a minute, we can just put this stuff together and look at that. This is why you're seeing stuff that starts off being described as conspiracy, now being described as, oh yeah, no, you can prove it. You know, like the starting point shouldn't be, it's a conspiracy. The starting point should be, well, we don't know, there's no proof, let's have a look. Oh yeah, there is some proof. Okay, that's definitely true then. Not like, how dare you? That's a conspiracy, that's a lie. Wait, let me just get the evidence. Oh, oh, I see. The document showed researchers aspire to genetically alter coronaviruses and monitor their release and transmission into bat caves to determine the risks those viruses pose to humans. Results just in. Turns out it causes a pretty bad pandemic. Now you gotta go everywhere in a mask, have vaccines the whole time, can't go anywhere or do nothing or go on holiday. Yes, it is quite infectious. It's quite infectious, boss. <laughs> In the post on Drastic's research website, the group said documents shared by an unnamed whistleblower showed the EcoHealth Alliance collaborated with Wuhan Institute of Virology to carry out advanced and dangerous human pathogenicity bat coronavirus research for a grant proposal EcoHealth Alliance filed with DARPA. DARPA is a research agency within the US Department of Defense which aims to preserve military readiness by protecting against the infectious diseases threat through its preempt program. This is worrying, isn't it? So it's like it's set up 
Right, you know what those bloody enemies of ours might be thinking of doing? What? They might be thinking of developing viruses and, like, releasing them. So, whoa, that's why we hate these guys, isn't it? Because of that. Oh, yeah, but also, why don't we do it as well? Okay, but <laughs> don't, like, ever try and make no money out of it. I'm not like, why would we? Well, there's no history of things that are developed by the military or by government programs ever entering into the commodified space or becoming commercial projects. So, yeah, it's weird that I even worried about it. Yeah, now we'll just develop these things. We'll <laughs> into the old bat cave and see if Batman develops a cough. In its funding request, Eco Health Alliance, check this out, right? They're called the Eco Health Alliance. Hi, we're the Eco Health Alliance. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. You'll be good for the environment and health, and how lovely that you've formed this alliance as well, so you're friendly as heck. What's your proposal? Well, what we propose is injecting deadly chimeric bat coronaviruses collected by the Wuhan Institute of Virology into humanized and batified mice. Get out! <laughs> Get out of my office! You're not doing that. I don't even know what you mean by batified mice. If you've invented the word batify to make a mice a bit more batty, I think you're sick. You're sick and your use of language is borderline ingenious, but also childish. A copy of the Eco Health Alliance's proposal said the proposed project aimed to diffuse the... <laughs> aimed to diffuse the potential for spillover. Good, this is an important bit, this, because what if it does spill over? Spillover of novel bat origin high zoonotic risks SARS related coronaviruses in Asia. The proposal's executive summary said researchers would intensively sample bats in field locations where scientists identified high spillover risk for coronaviruses. EcoHealth Alliance wrote in the document that it requested 14 million from DARPA to conduct its research, which was estimated to take three and a half years. The proposal was dated March 2018, less than two years before COVID 19 began spreading around the world. What a coincidence! What a coincidence that they make this proposal in March 2018, a couple of years later, oh my god, that's actually happened. How weird, how weird that the very thing we was doing all this research in has actually happened. Where did it begin? Well, another coincidence on this whole big stack of coincidences, you know, like you're called a conspiracy theorist if you start like making connections between some of this information. But the idea that there would not be a connection between the Wuhan lab of virology experiment in, in high zoonotic risk SARS related coronaviruses, but the idea that there's not a connection there, it's, uh, you'd have to sort of split your mind in two. The world now knows that the Wuhan Institute of Virology had an extensive collection of coronaviruses gathered over many years of foraging in the bat caves. And many of them, including the closest known relative to the pandemic virus SARS-CoV-2, came from a mine shaft where three men died from a suspected SARS-like disease in 2012. It knows that the Institute was actively working with these viruses using inadequate safety protocols. Yeah, we've got protocols. Are they adequate? Not really. Just try and wash your hands and that. Sing happy birthday while you're singing around. Do you sing happy birthday twice? Just do it once, really, generally speaking. <laughs> protocols in ways that could have triggered the pandemic and that the lab and Chinese authorities have gone to great lengths to conceal these activities. When people go to great lengths to conceal something, it normally means that there is something, doesn't it? You don't go to great lengths to conceal nothing. What are you trying to hide? I wasn't trying nothing. Have a look. It's also clear that the first cases appeared weeks before the outbreak at the Huanan wet market, which was once thought to be ground zero. Once provided a comfortable, xenophobically tinged wet market. None of that is conclusive proof that a lab leak caused the virus. Yeah, there is no conclusive proof. We're just reading this report. In one document, a DARPA official wrote he was not recommending funding for the project. I'm not actually... This seems like dangerous. Like, why would you make something much, much worse, then release it into a bat cave and like where it's likely that there'd be a spillover? I mean, what could we gain? I don't know, load of money. Mm. While DARPA said the project had a good running start, it noted several weaknesses. Yeah, it looks like it. Within the proposal, including DARPA's concern that vaccine approaches may lack sufficient epitope coverage to effectively protect against the diverse and evolving quasi-species of the many coronaviruses found in the bat caves. Which sort of makes the whole situation a little more ironic that when they were applying to fund research that it possible led to this outbreak at least has connections to the geographical location and sounds in part very much like the kind of conditions that have subsequently occurred that one of the things they pointed out is it will be very hard to vaccinate against it would cause a lot of problems that it would be dangerous so i don't know you make your own mind up i've secretly made my mind up but i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to influence you 
because I don't think I'm any cleverer than you. I think we're about the same. Like, you know, we're all flawed human beings. Let's all just get on in a journey of discovery. Like the people that revealed this information, sleuths working together. Why don't we work together? Why don't you tell me what you think is the truth? Why don't you help me understand it a little bit better in the comments below? If you like my video, give it a like. Keep this comment section active. Keep it clean and keep it loving. Give us a little subscribe so we can keep these things going. And in the event that I ever lose the ability to communicate with you, why don't you sign up to russellbrand.com? You can uh, get my newsletter sent directly into your mind. It will just appear in your consciousness. It's a thing we've worked out. We can stitch things into your synapses. Not really, it's an email. And uh, if you like this video, have a look at this one. If you want to meditate now or like just chill and learn about well-being, have a look at this one. And uh, stay free. Stay connected. Don't lose yourself in all this. See you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>